Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video I want to talk about this synthesis. So how am I going to approach something like that? Usually the very first thing that I'm going to look at is the number of carbons in my starting material and my products, and also the uh, type of functional groups that I have. So from the perspective of the number of carbons, in my starting material I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and seven carbons, while in my product I have one, two, three, four, five, and six carbons. So what I'm seeing right away is that I'm going to end up cutting one carbon off. And by looking carefully at my molecule, I can also see that the carbon that I'm going to be cutting off is right there. Which means that we need to remember all types of reactions that we know that cuts carbon-carbon bonds. And I know that within the scope of our course, cutting carbon-carbon bonds typically is accomplished with the azanolysis reaction. So I know that somewhere in the middle of my synthesis I'm going to have the azanolysis as the important step, and uh, we also know that azanolysis gives aldehydes and ketones, and the functional group that I have in my final product here is a ketone, so it is logical that the predecessor step to our ketone must be the corresponding alkene, which has undergone the azanolysis cleavage, so the predecessor should be something that looks like this, so I have an alkene with a double bond, and that double bond is something that we cut off. So in order to do that, I'm going to do step number one, which is going to be the ozone, and the step number two of my azonolysis here is going to be either a reductive or oxidative workup, in this case it doesn't really matter, so let's say I'm just going to say that my second step here is DMS. And I will remind you that DMS is dimethyl sulfide, so that is CH3, sulfur, and another CH3 here, in case your instructor is one of those uh, teachers who really love structures instead of, you know, abbreviations. Okay, so my next problem here is how am I going to make my double bond? Because the double bond that I have over here, well, it didn't just appear from the thin air, we needed to synthesize that somehow, and normally we make double bond via some sort of elimination reaction. So there are two possible predecessors to this double bond. One, where the leaving group is going to be on my terminal carbon, so that would be something like this, and another one is going to be where the leaving group uh, was sitting on the tertiary carbon, so that would have been something like that. Now, thinking about how we can make either of those molecules, the first important thing that kind of jumps at me right away is that the only way how I can make this molecule over here is via the uh, hydroboration oxidation of the double bond, or maybe radical halogenation of a double bond, or something of that sort. So the only way I can make that halide, if X is a halogen of course, is via a reaction where the starting material would be an alkene itself, and I am trying to make an alkene from there. So that is a little bit of a circular logic here, which means that that is not an acceptable uh, predecessor. So I'm going to cross that option out as not a viable one. Now, when it comes to my tertiary alkyl halide, let's say I will redraw that with the real halogen instead of an X, so for instance if I put a bromine there instead of my X, that means that my molecule would have to look something of this sort. So when it comes to a molecule like that, I can make it from my starting material by using a simple uh, radical halogenation reaction, so that would be coming from my starting material via just a single step, and that single step is going to be radical halogenation, as I've mentioned, so that would be something like Br2 and light. So putting it all together, what I have is step number one, radical halogenation. We are going to have Br2 and light, which going to give me the halide, where the bromine is already sitting on the tertiary atom like that. The next step is going to be the elimination reaction. So in order to eliminate our hydrogen halide and make the less substituted double bond, like what I have over here, I would need to use a bulky base, something like, let's say, a third butoxide or uh, maybe LDA 
or maybe DBN, DBU, something of that sort. We need a bulky base because what we have here is the Hoffman product. And then from this point, we are going to do the ozonolysis. So for the ozonolysis, step number one is going to be O3, and step number two is going to be DMS or any other workup that you like, because in this particular case, the workup step doesn't matter. We are going to form a ketone. Workup only matters when you have an aldehyde versus carboxylic acid. If you want an aldehyde, you would do the reductive workup like DMS. If you wanted a carboxylic acid, you would do the oxidative workup with the hydrogen peroxide. But in this case, since we are forming a ketone, that doesn't really matter at all. And that's how we are going to accomplish this synthesis. Let me know what you thought about the synthesis in the comments below make sure to like share and subscribe for daily organic chemistry updates watch this video next and i will see you tomorrow